All right, if you remember the last video, I started working on the tongue and grooves for the doors and putting the door frames together. And now I'm making the panels for the center of them. And I decided to go with just a uh, quarter inch cherry panel in there. And I just, I took and I actually resawed the stock and prepared it um, up to this point. I didn't show on the video, but now I'm just getting ready to glue up the panels for the doors and you know, same thing I'm using type bond 3 but you really have to be careful when you do these thin panels you want to make sure that the uh, edges are all perfectly uh, square and that you don't put too much pressure on the clamps when you clamp them because you actually can bow panels like this out pretty easy when you're you know that thick of sol or thin of solid wood so I just glued them up and uh, let the glue dry and you can see they came out nice and flat and uh, here I'm just taking the first one just kind of Cutting it up just to uh, fit it to the door because I, I did glue them up oversized so that you know I could not cut them down later and cut the worst uh, pieces out of them, kind of you know get the best that I could. So I uh, I really like how I you know since I upgraded this uh, anchor sled to this Craig stop here, it's so easy to just set don't need a ruler anymore and you know it never goes out of adjustment or anything so that makes it really easy on me to get real accurate cuts without you know messing around so it, it does do a good job at you know cutting everything perfectly square so I'm real happy with it now so I got that first one fit to the uh, door there that's you know slipped in the frame there and just gonna do a rough sanding on it first so I just uh, you know, I took like a 80 grit to start out with, and then I just went over to the little sander, the orbital one there with the, uh, you know, and I just went up to uh, 150 grit at this point. And once I had that, uh, you know, done, I went back and I got the other one, started, you know, finishing that one off there, and doing the final cutting to size. And again, it's uh, you know, it's so easy with this other stop on it. I'm real happy with it. And those little uh, blocks I put in there really do work good for keeping things from shifting and keeping them tight up against the fence. So I got that panel cut now, and there you can see both doors. I just kind of test fit them, put them together to make sure everything fit, and. There's about an eighth inch horizontal movement in the panel and a sixteenth vertical because it's going to expand with the grain. And then I'm going to do some more sanding, but the filters are getting uh, pretty plugged up now, so I'm just going to swap them out. I do go through quite a few filters with this because I leave it running to clear the air in my shop all the time. And uh, you know, it definitely was a worthwhile thing to build, and it does keep a lot of that uh, larger dust out of your lungs. You'll never catch a fine dust with something like this. But I got everything sanded uh, with up to 220 grit there. And now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to put two coats on both sides of these center panels. And I'm going to sand with 320 grit between them. Figure I, um, you know, I want the edges to be finished so that, that when they move, move within the door during seasonal changes, you won't see unfinished areas. So, you know, that was... Uh, that's why I did that. And I tell you what, that photo light is amazing for when you're doing polyurethane work. You can really see good, uh, you know, you see every little thing that you miss. And then I went back through and I did the uh, the styles and rails of the door. And I put, I painted, the, I actually put polyurethane, two coats and all the grooves. And also I put a coat on each of the um, surfaces I don't want glue on. You, I put kind of put marks on there where to go up to and stuff so when I did the glue up on the door I figured I'd have no mess at all and there they are all you know like everything's got two coats on it there then it's time to start doing a glue up so it's just a matter of I'm using a tight bond three and I'm using that little baby glue bot to get it in all the mortises and you know on all the tenons and stuff there so and I want to make sure everything's really coated good and try to do it as fast as I can now. I really sped this video up just to, you know, make it go quicker. But you don't have a lot of time with this Type Bond 3 to, to really get everything assembled and clamped. So you want to try to move fast. 
and as I said before, that panel does float in the door, and I don't use any of those rubber space balls or anything. I figure, you know, a little bit of noise won't bother me if it moves around. And then, as, as always, I use this, uh, this clamping board to uh, kind of get everything squared up and clamped together on. And this time I used the big bar clamps to pull everything tight. So there it is. You can see there's really no mess. And uh, then I went back and glued up the other one. And, you know, now I've got the set of them done. And they did come out real nice. So back over to that, that sanding bench to, you know, start doing a final sanding on them. And, um, you know, luckily everything really aligned up good. So there really wasn't much sanding to do. And then I had to, I left them about a sixteenth longer and I had to take half of that off each side. So what I decided to do was to clamp the two doors together so they come out perfect. And, uh, you know, just draw a line on one of them and then just keep flipping them and turn them around and, and uh, get the ends, end sanded right down to, you know, the exact number that I wanted. That sander is a really great thing to have. <clears throat> And then it's over to the router table, and it's time to uh, just change out the bits. And you can see how easy this, uh, you know, adding this, these motors to drive the thing really did make everything uh, super easy to set up and change over and stuff like that. And nice, it's real nice with this big MLCS router bit set, because I, you know, I have just about every bit I could possibly use now, so it's real easy to just grab the one I need. So that's all switched over and uh, just kind of ready to go set everything up now and you know again it's uh, just push the button and then watch it move and now I'm just gonna put a really small chamfer around both sides of the uh, door there so I'm just gonna you know go around and just do a quick quick little chamfer on there and and this actually helps when you have doors that swing open. If they uh, should ever get banged or anything, a sharp edge will really show a ding. Where if you put a uh, a little bit of a chamfer on them, the uh, dings will kind of disappear, you know, in an area that's going to see a lot of use. So that didn't take long to, to chamfer them and get them all ready to go. And... Um, nice having a good router table now that everything comes out nice and even in the meantime the mailman delivered my uh, new router bit set it's a molding bit set um, trying to decide which bit to use for the moldings and I asked my wife which one she liked she looked at the catalog and said I can't tell by looking at that thing so then I said well gee maybe I should order the whole set and she agreed so you know I'm gonna make samples for her to see and we'll decide then and again, I got the final sanding on the doors done and got this photo light out. You can see I got a nice articulating uh, joint there for it now. So nice, strong, heavy one so I can, you know, just angle it wherever I want it. And it's just, you know, really it's great for videos, but it's really good, for, even better for when you're doing finishing. It really lets you see everything. And then I just take, uh, take some old boards and stick some nails in them to use to flip my doors on. I start with the back side and then just flip them over and and I went through and I I wound up getting three coats on everything then it was time to start cutting up some of the boards for the moldings around the baseboard that I'm going to be making so I don't have a track saw someday I will hopefully and um, I just took a old aluminum extrusion I have and some plywood and try to get it as straight as I could um, it's always a problem when you're working with rough cut boards and you don't edge them on the sawmill because you don't know if you're going to use them live edge or not. So you have to go back through later and try to get a straight cut that's, you know, 10 feet long, which is pretty, pretty much a tough thing to do. So I just set it up, got it, got it cut as straight as I could, and then, you know, once I had one edge to go off of, I put a longer fence on my table saw there. You can see I put a long piece of plywood on. And I'm just going through and, you know, cutting this down to the narrower molding strips. Now, you can pretty much see, if you watch the end of this open up, there's a lot of tension in this cherry board. And actually, you know, not much I can do at this point. It's going to warp a little bit, but once I get it cut down to the molding, it should be fine. 
So this is about, you know, all I'm going to show of making the moldings on this video. Just starting to get the stock ready. And, you know, I had to take a couple pieces and just rip the straight edge on them and um, get them prepared. And uh, next video I'll be doing, uh, you know, trying out those cutters and seeing what shapes I get with them and stuff. So I was just doing this while the uh, polyurethane was doing the final curing on the doors. And dealing with these long strips can be, you know, can be a pain, but sometimes you got to do it. So here we are, polyurethane's all dry, and I, I'm going back and I'm sanding everything good with 320. And as I said, this polyurethane, uh, this polycrylic, actually water-based stuff, uh, it takes about 90 days to really harden so you can polish it out good. So all I do, I've been doing lately, is just uh, sanding it with 320 grit and then going back with uh, Johnson's Paste Wax with 40 steel wool and putting a couple coats on there. And that'll have to hold it over till you know, I do the final polishing. And then it's time to, to drill the holes for the uh, handles. And you know, as you've seen before, I took and I bought these uh, wall hanging uh, hooks that match the rest of the fixtures in the bathroom and just had to uh, drill a pocket and then put a square pocket to lock them in to use them as a handle. So that's all I'm doing here is I've got that little mortise chisel that's the uh, 0.31 square and here I got my uh, little pocket and then the, the little square one there and you can see the handle locks right in there to orient it. So it's really easy to mount the handles and just have to drill a hole and I put tape on my drill bit to make sure I don't drill through the other side because that would be terrible at this point in time. And then the one, the first piece of the handle actually uh, screws in through the center of it. It's hollow in there and it's got like a V to lock the other one into with two tabs. And then the... Uh, you know, the other piece just kind of locks right onto it like that. So I just got them, got them both started and then uh, go back and there's a little tiny set screw that goes in the, the side of there and it locks into the V on the post that you put in the door and locks the handles in place night. So they, they really did wind up working out good for the handles and they do match everything else in the room. Now it's time to rough mount the hinges, and these are those hinges that I've uh, used a couple times on projects. They're a real versatile hinge, can be used in many different configurations. So I just got them set up here to do for an inlay, and what I do is I, um, I locate them on the door where I want them, and then there's a couple of slots that are in them. I'll show you a little better in a second. And I just put the, use the two holes in the slots. I drill the, the hole in the center of the slot. And um, I use the two holes with the slots to mount them so they can have it be adjusted later. And there's the hinges that I've been using there. I just get them at Home Depot. And here you can see a little better how the, uh, there's two slots in them and there's two holes. I, you put the first screws in the slots and that way you can adjust them once they're in place and then you go back and lock them down with the second screws once everything's aligned and put some tape on your drill bit there too so you don't go through the other side so the hinges are on and it's all ready to go mount them um, luckily they're flush with the bottom of the vanity so I just put a clamped a piece of plywood on there to hold them up in line I didn't have it clamped good. And then um, just uh, going back in the same thing here. I'm marking where the slots go. So I mark the uh, mark the four slots. And then I'm just going to go back and drill some holes in there. I got that board out of the way first. But now I'm just uh, you know drilling some pilot holes for the screws in there. And then I'll just put the clamp, clamp that board back on and just put the door in place there and use that to align it. And I'll just, uh, you know, snug it down in the center of the slot to start out with. And I'll wait till I get the two doors on to do the final adjustments. 
that's the first one and then I'm just going to go over to the other side and do the second one now I still have those eight holes from when I messed up and put that uh, drawer front on backwards and um, actually I'm waiting I've got some epoxy coming I'm going to put two blue epoxy stripes across that area on the drawer I was going to replace it but it just happens that the green and everything else for that board was taking out of the same boards for the doors so I I decided not to and I just decided I wanted to try doing that blue epoxy river type coating anyway so this will be a fun fun thing to try out in another video and I got the door then made sure everything cleared and um, got everything aligned exact and you just loosen the screws and you can wiggle them a little bit and once you get everything perfect just go back and drill the remaining uh, the, the uh, pilot holes for the uh, fixed hole screws and you know there it is everything's on and vanity's done meantime we got a 65 degree day out and I got the uh, hose out and washed my truck I can't believe it this thing was so dirty from all winter long the salt and the snow and everything else and it looks like brand new again and boy that is uh, I really love that truck so if you didn't see it uh, in the last video I got this Ortor larger laser and I um, in it I, I printed out a poem that my wife had written years ago and that's as far as I got in that video and I you know I said I'd finish it in a future video and this is it now it's, it's nice and warm out now so I brought it outside uh, and I decided to just use this rust-oleum uh, crystal clear spray that I use on my routed stuff and I'm just gonna go back through and put three coats on both sides of it and actually it soaked in three coats really good um, it still wasn't really smooth or anything it still had a little bit of a texture to it and stuff and that plywood was very thirsty so I got that done and then um, I picked out some Catawba wood that I had uh, this actually was a tree that uh, was in our last house I took down about 25 years ago that the um, the geese that we're talking about in the poem when they were um, nesting down the road from us in the pond that was filled in they used to bring the family up and come under this tree sometimes and just you know sit out there and uh, pick for bugs and stuff like that so it, uh, you know I decided to save a piece of this someday to use in the future and um, I started cutting up some of the pieces actually I've got several chunks of it and uh, it turned out that they just had really beautiful grain and um, really like a quilted and pecky type grain to them so I sawed some down to the thickness I wanted for the uh, frames and then just run it through the planer to clean it all up and uh, you know get it nice and smooth and there you can see the, the beautiful figure and uh, there's like pecky spots and it's I've never seen Catawba like this before so um, you know that's, that's gonna be uh, the frame for it real simple frame um, I'm just cutting this down to some narrower strips now to make the frame out of and originally I was going to do some fancy edges around it and stuff but then I, once I started cutting into it I saw these little pecky spots on the edges and stuff and I decided to uh, just leave them square just to you know not destroy any of the character of it so this is just you know cutting it down this Catawba wood really stinks when you're cutting it too it's got a really nasty smell it's time to go back and miter the corners and I didn't feel like messing with the uh, the big jig so I just grabbed this little Craig uh, miter gauge and that miter set to get that set for cutting the 45 and it's time to you know start trimming trimming the corners here and this Catawba is actually it's a fairly soft wood I don't I think it's considered a hardwood but it's uh, you know it's fairly soft to work with and uh, definitely stinky then it was just a matter of working out exactly you know how the grain was going to be matched and balanced and go together and you know where I was going to make the cuts on the pieces it's fun to finally get a chance to use some of the uh, wood that I've been dragging around with me for you know years now so it's a fun little project that went good with it so I pretty much uh, got the uh, the longer pieces matched up and 
that's where you have to make sure you cut the angle in the right direction and everything and I just put a stop on the miter gauge there. I have to make a put a track in this one also like the other one and I just had to cut a rabbit around the edge for the pitcher to go in and all I did is I just uh, did two cuts on the saw one cut horizontal and one cut vertical because I was too lazy to put on the dado head or set up the router table so you know this was the quickest way and there you can see just the frame will fit right in there and you now same thing I got out that clamping board and got the frame all clamped up glued up um, now when I do frames, this isn't going to be reinforced or anything, but I'm just going to throw one of the, a couple of these uh, pin nails in each corner there to reinforce it, just in case it should uh, get knocked off and hit the floor or something. That should help, you know, keep the glue from splitting apart on end grain. Right, that all glued up and uh, just double check the fit there and everything fits perfect and uh, looks like it's gonna go well together so time to do a little bit more sanding over to that sanding station and then here I'm just gonna do three coats of uh, polycrylic sanding with 320 grit between them and you can see that grain is really starting to come out there now and while that's drying I've got this other project this is a uh, butterfly decoration I had built years ago um, it's broken you can see one of the arms is broken off of it I turned a piece of cherry to fit in there and this was actually a uh, candle holder that was given to us when we moved in our house for a housewarming gift there was a uh, all those bent down branches used to stand up straight like that but we don't use candles and it was a real expensive candle holder so I decided to just take it and bend it up and make a wall decoration out of it you know so you know, at least it would get seen by the people that gave it to us so um, it may not be what it was exactly meant for but it, it really worked out good so I have to go down in my shop now and uh, weld weld this back together here and uh, you know in the meantime the finish on this has uh, dried I got three coats on there and it's time to just do a final 320 grit sanding on it now yeah, with all the polycrylic I do and then go back and put two coats of Johnson paste wax on with four zero steel wool now I didn't want to get fancy putting this in there so I just took my hot glue gun out and a little bit of warp to it I had to hold down with a couple batteries for weights here but um, the glue dries quick and uh, you know holds everything in place good and it only takes a second to do so you know that was my easiest way out here And there it is. That I'm real happy. The the color of the frame actually matches the color of the burning of the laser now, and I'm I'm really happy the way that came out. I just love that wood. Just um, you know, such an amazing wood. And so I got this all welded together. And I had originally moved the removed some of the butterflies and saved them. And I was short some, so I bought some off of Amazon. I found these on Amazon. They did have a little metal thing on them. So I cut that off, and then I cleaned up the other ones and went back and just kind of rough figured where I wanted to put them all. Got them all kind of spread out and laid out there. And then I just went back with the hot glue gun to put them all on now. Just kind of, you know, try to get something a little bit random on there. So it looked like... Uh, ton of butterflies that just landed and the hot glue does a real good job at holding them on because the uh, originally I had put them on 15 years ago with hot glue and uh, you know the original one stayed if they didn't get hit by towels and stuff in the bathroom they would have you know survived good but there it is all the butterflies are um, attached now and time to go up and hang it so I located, I put a little higher in the wall this time so it probably won't get whacked by towels or anything. And just, uh, I got a screw going into a stud right over the uh, center line of the towel rack there. So that's real easy to um, to mount. The, the center piece comes out and one screw goes in the middle and little rubber feet actually go against the wall. And then I have that cherry insert that I turned that goes in there with double-sided tape. 
So that's all done, and um, real happy how it comes out. Goes against the blue wall. It really, I think it came out good. And then I just hung my uh, my wife's poem on the other side, right next to the vanity, and uh, right where you see all the peckiness and the wood and stuff uh, in really good light and everything. So I'm real happy with that. So I just thought I'd you know give you an update, and uh, you can see I'm still moving along slowly but surely. Uh, it's turning into a career just about. Uh, but I don't spend a lot of time on it all the time. So I'm real happy the way it's coming out. And the next video um, coming out, we'll actually uh, be working on some moldings and shower surround and stuff like that. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.